In this video, I'm going to provide an introduction to lab scopes. And this video in particular is for new users or people who want to learn how to use the PicoScope and, and want to know some of the basics of setting it up for the first time. So the PicoScope is basically a box like this. This is the data acquisition device. And we have, I have a couple of different examples here. Here's, here's one that has four channels. So this is a four channel PicoScope. This is a two channel PicoScope. And either one of them connects to a PC. It's gotta be a PC that runs Windows or if you have a Mac, you can use these, but only if you install Boot Camp or there is also, I've been told a program called Parallels that you can purchase that allows you to run Windows on your Mac, but it's gotta be on a Windows machine. Each channel measures um, some electrical signal and we can choose different probes. And for the example today, I'm going to set up a standard probe, which is just a lead. So I've got here a, a wire that will connect to channel A. I slide it onto that connector and twist it to lock it. And on this end, I've got my positive and negative leads. And this is going to be a standard probe that we would use to measure voltage. So for example, I might clip this onto the onto the terminals of a battery to measure battery voltage. You could use any kind of a sensor or any kind of a probe here, but uh, here, here's the other most common type of a probe. It's a current clamp. And you've probably used these before or seen these before, but this clamp clamps around a wire or cable and then we'll measure the amount of current going through it. So I will connect that one to channel B like this, twist it to lock it. This current probe, by the way, happens to be the 600 amp current probe. So later when we're choosing the probe and selecting this in the software, just remember that, that this is a 600 amp current clamp. Now this scope connects to the PC with a USB cable. It plugs into the back of one of these scope modules. We'd connect it like that, and then it would come over to a USB port on the PC and plug in like that. So that's how simple it is to set it up. Next, we'll go to the website and show you how to download the software that you'll need. Okay, so the first thing that you'll need to do is download the PicoScope software. And this software is free, and it can be found at picoauto.com. And once you're on the website, click on Downloads. And you'll have two options, the beta version or the stable version. Go with the stable version, and when you click here, choose this, it'll download the software, the installer, and you'll have to run the installer and install the program. This download could take uh, quite a while, or it can be really fast, just depending on your internet speeds. Now, I've already got this software installed, so I'm going to skip this step now. Once you've installed the software, you'll see these two icons show up. Uh, Pico Diagnostics, we'll talk about that one later, but today we're just going to use the PicoScope 6 automotive software. So we'll open this up. Now, if you don't have a PicoScope device connected to your PC, it'll pop up with this warning saying that no device was found and it will allow you to run a demo device, which is basically a waveform generator. So if you click yes, you can open up the software, you can learn how to use it, you can explore it. And it's just like using the real thing. So that's a great way to practice using the PicoScope software if you don't own a PicoScope. However, I do have a device, so I'm going to plug that in. You'll see now that we're, uh, we're reading live. We should see a flashing LED on the PicoScope box and we see the, the live data here. All right, so you'll notice up here at the top, we've got channel A and channel B. If I had a four channel scope plugged in, I would also have a channel C and a channel D here. But since I just have a two channel scope, these are the only two options that show up for me. Now I'm going to give you three simple steps to setting up the Pico scope for the first time that will ensure that you're successful. The, the biggest reason for not being able to get the reading that you're looking for on the Pico scope is not setting it up correctly. One of the mistakes people make is they come up here to automotive and there are presets that you can use for certain measurements that you want to take here. I would advise that you never click on that. As a beginning user, don't. It'll just confuse you and then cause you more problems than it will do good. So come over here to channel A and channel B, and this is where our settings are. And the three steps are, number one, 
choose the probe you're using. We said on channel A that we were going to be using the standard probe here, right? Which is the one that was already defaulted to. So we've chosen the probe. And then we want to choose the range. Now, if we're going to be measuring battery voltage, this range of plus or minus 50 millivolts isn't going to work. So I'm going to drop down on this menu here. And the range that'll probably be the best, since this is a 12 volt battery, will be this plus or minus 20 volts. So we'll select that. There are the first two steps. Now step three is to choose your time base and to go slow. When you click here, we have a lot of different options. And this five milliseconds per division is talking about how much time is in each of these divisions. A division is one of these grids. There are 10 divisions across the screen. And so if I have five, currently I have five milliseconds per division, that means that I have 50 milliseconds of recording time across the entire screen because there are 10 of those divisions. Now, I would recommend that we don't deal in nanoseconds, microseconds, or milliseconds, that we come down here and only deal in this range, so slow it down. For example, if I want to record something that may last a minute, I could come down here and I could choose 10 seconds per division. Now it will take 10 seconds for this to cross each division for a total of 100 seconds across the screen. And that's a great way to do it. So there are the three steps. We'll do this again on, the, on channel B now. So on channel B, step one, we'll choose the probe. This time we're not using the standard probe. We said we were going to use the 600 amp current clamp. And we find that right here. And now channel B is still turned off, so we'll come and we're going to choose the range. You'll notice because I told it that I'm using the current clamp, that it's given me a range now in amps. And because I'm going to measure starter current, I suspect that it will be at least 600 amps on initial startup, so I'm going to choose this range that goes from negative 100 to positive 600 amps. And once I do that, I should see this scale on the right-hand side populate and it's in amps, if you notice right here. Now we don't need to do step three again. When we chose the time frame and slowed it down, that applies to all channels. So we've done step three already. Okay, so one more thing that you'll need to know is that there is a stop and a go button down here. The green button, of course, is go, and the red button means stop. But also, as long as I have my screen selected, and I'm not highlighting or selecting one of the buttons at the the top menu here, when I hit the space bar, that pauses or stops the frame. And when I hit it again, it starts recording again. So we'll use that tool. Now we'll go out to the car and we'll record our data. We're going to record battery voltage on channel A and battery current or the current flowing into and out of the battery on channel B. Okay, now we're out of the car and we're going to connect the scope to the car. So we'll take our leads that are on channel A, voltage pro, Connect the battery terminals, and then we'll take the current clamp. Now you'll notice inside the current clamp it's got an arrow with a positive sign. What this means is this arrow points the direction of conventional current flow, which means assuming that current is flowing from positive to negative. So this arrow should point away from positive and towards negative. So we're going to clamp this right here. So we turn this on, we check our zero, to zero the amp clamp, we come down here to the red line, which is channel B, where our amp clamp is plugged in. And we want to make sure that this line is on zero according to this scale over here. And this, this little dash on the right-hand side represents zero. To make it easier to see, I simply drag this ruler down a ways. And up here, it tells me where that ruler is. So I'll click on this and enter zero to make sure that ruler is right on zero. And then I turn the knob on the current probe until I feel like I'm right on zero. And now we can say that the amp clamp is zero, so our starting point is at zero amps. And we're going to connect it so that the arrow points toward the negative battery terminal. And we, we need to make sure that it goes around all of the battery cables so we can measure all current going into or out of the battery. Okay, we'll go ahead and hit the space bar on the picoscope to start recording. Start the car. The 
pause the recording by pressing on the space bar on the computer. So we've captured our data. Okay, now that we've collected our data, we can come in here and look at our waveform and we'll see that we've got a blue and a red trace here. The blue trace represents channel A where we were measuring the battery voltage. We can see if I come along here, if I move my pointer and left click on my mouse, it says that we were at approximately 12.53 volts before the key was turned on. And we're using the scale on the left hand side for battery voltage. Down here, the, the red trace is the current measurement. This is channel B where we have the current clamp around the battery cable and we're measuring the current flowing out of and back into the battery. And this scale is over here on the right hand side. And we can see that we were here right around zero amps until the key was turned on. And when the key was turned on, you'll see that the battery voltage dropped slightly and the current increased because the fuel pump turned on, the lights turned on, and some other things started to go. Right here is where the fuel pump shut off, but the door lock cycled. For some reason, the door lock's locked and unlocked right there, so we can see that. And then it held steady until this point right here. And this is the point where the car started. Now we can zoom in and look at this. And there are a couple of different ways that you can zoom in. One is you can zoom, zoom vertically and horizontally separately. So if I want to zoom horizontally, I come up here to this times one box and I increase that. You'll see that it stretches it horizontally. You can see from this small window here what we're looking at the wrong part of the screen. So I'll drag it back over here. And we've zoomed in and we're looking now at some of the details of that time when the car was cranking and starting. If I want to zoom vertically, I come down to these boxes. There's a blue box in this corner for channel A and a red box in this corner for channel B. If I click on that, I can increase the scale and that stretches the image vertically so say I can see more of the vertical detail. So as I increase that, of course it goes off the screen and then I can bring the scale back down here. You'll see that's just moving the numbers on the left hand side down. And if I wanted to do the same thing on channel B, I could come over here and deselect the same thing. Now, if I want to reset the scale, I click on this and I can click that reset button to reset the, the uh, zoom and that one there to reset the offset. And then if I want to return back to my original screen, I come up here to this icon on the, the top and click that. And now I'm back to the original picture where I started out. One other way to zoom that most new users like to use is this magnifying glass right here. Once I've selected that, I bring the magnifying glass down here and I can draw a box around the part of the waveform that I want to zoom in on. And that zooms for me too. And I can continue to zoom in on portions of that until I can see all the detail that I want to. You can see that it can you can go on for a long time if you get in too far and need to return, just click that button and you're back to the original picture. One more feature before we zoom in and look at this, I want to show you is the filter. You see that we have a lot of this uh, noise and that's what it is, is noise. All of these hashes, looks kind of like fuzz on the, on the waveform. So we come up to each channel on this drop down button and I would click activate filtering. And you see once I did that, it took out most of that noise. I can increase or decrease the filtering. If I click up, it increases the frequency at which it filters and it actually, the, the fuzz comes back. And so I can adjust or fine tune that filtering until I get it right where I want it. And then I can do the same thing with channel B. So I activate the filtering there. And look to see if it's where I want it. Perhaps I want a little, more filtering, so I decrease the frequency. You should see the, the fuzz disappearing and the, the image clearing up. Now there is such thing as too much filtering, and so you have to kind of be careful and realize that you can filter out some of the details that you might want to look at later. Okay, so let's zoom in. All we're going to look at today is what the, we're gonna look at the minimum battery voltage during cranking and maybe the average current during cranking. So. The rule of thumb for a lab scope is that the minimum voltage during cranking should never go below 8.0 volts. 
we can see when we initially started to crank the car that it drew more than 600 amps initially. And during that time when more than 600 amps was flowing from the battery, we want to go see what the voltage went to. We want to make sure that it never drops below 8.0 volts. So let's zoom in on that, on that part there. We'll do that by going over here to this magnifying glass. And we'll select the part that we want to zoom in on. Now I'll get my pointer again, come down here and I'll left click. And it looks like my minimum battery voltage during cranking was approximately 8.4 volts. So that's above the minimum and the battery passes that test. If we want to go look at the, uh, the cranking current, and I'm going to look at this area right here that shows what the current was doing once the starter motor started to spin at a steady state. It looks like my average is going to be about 178 amps. So there's some of the data I can collect. So that is a quick introduction to how to use a lab scope. Now there's a whole lot more information that we can glean out of these waveforms if we wanted to. We could talk about the condition of the starter motor, of the solenoid, of the diodes inside of the alternator. We can do a lot, but we'll do that in another video. So that's a quick tutorial on how to use the PicoScope to measure both voltage and current. Hopefully that helps you and one of the best ways to learn is to pull it out and start using it and playing with it and clicking on buttons and seeing what they do. Good luck!